M S W Media. Thanks to Athletic Greens for supporting the Daily Beans. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. If you're looking for a simpler and cost-effective supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash daily beans. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Thursday, May 11th, 2023. Today, Rep. George Santos is arraigned in New York on 13 felony counts. Some of the voir dire documents are unsealed from the Trump rape and defamation case. The Army Sergeant, Greg Abbott, wants to pardon, was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Mike Fanone has some words about CNN's Trump Rehabilitation Town Hall and Missouri lawmakers pass a bill banning transition care for minors. I'm Allison Gill. And I'm Dana Goldberg. Hey, Dana. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday to you. I don't know about the listeners, but Allison and I are exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> We're really tired today. For And we can't. So think back to yesterday when it was Wednesday, because you're listening to this on Thursday. Were you tired all day? Because I'm tired. Is all this day. like a Trump slump? Like when he gets indicted and we get super <laughs> excited or he loses a case and we're like, woohoo. And the next day we're in this I'm weird so Trump slump. Excited. He's been indicted. I can't. <laughs> yeah, now it's George Santos' and now we're like, turn and I can't hide it. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what it is. But yeah, I feel like uh, maybe the, I don't know, maybe getting all pumped up over this arraignment for, for George Santos. And then it's just like a, it's like a serotonin crash, maybe like coming down off Molly. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it could be. I don't know. I don't, I don't do Molly. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just. I've, I've never heard. even met Molly. Just so you know, I'm not coming down off Molly. I don't know who she is. I'm sure she's a very nice girl. (laughs) Dismount. (laughs) I guess we're waking up. We're waking up, people. We're waking up. Paula Pell made that joke in uh, Wine Country. She was like, I did Molly in college, but then her girlfriend found out. (laughs) Something like that. Love Paula Pell so much. All right. So now that we've got the pop culture references out of the way, Santos was charged today. The, the indictment was unsealed. I did a long thread on it on, on Twitter, at Mueller, she wrote, if you want to read it, but five counts of wire fraud, three counts of money laundering, three counts of unemployment fraud, and two 1001 charges. Those are, you know, making false statements to the House on his financial forms. He pled not guilty at arraignment today, which I love, because if you, you know, He's kind of in a pickle, Dana, right? Because if he pleads guilty, he admits to money laundering and wire fraud and yeah. lying. Uh, but if he pleads not guilty, which he has done, then there could be a trial with discovery. And this is what's called a paper trial, a paper charge, right? This is just wire fraud. This is documents. This isn't like, you know, tell us how you feel about things. This is like we have <laughs> evidence. And so all of that would come out. It would be a big trial, right? You know, in the lead up to... <laughs> Because <laughs> he's running for re-election, and he would most certainly get convicted. I I think he would be convicted. I know he's innocent until proven guilty. These are just allegations, but that would be bad. So um, I'm. It would be, but unfortunately, I don't know if it would keep Republicans from voting for him at this point. Yeah, and if he pled and admitted to these charges, he would probably get a lighter sentence than he would if you if you go to trial and you know and lose. Yeah, or they throw the book at you anyway. Uh, he's out on bail after some anonymous people posted $50,000 to bail him out. <laughs> his passports have been taken away. His next hearing is in June. I'll go over all this in detail with Pete Strzok on next week's cleanup on L45. We'll go over all these charges and, you know, the Title 18 codes and sections and stuff. And, and of course, he's tweeting, witch hunt, because that's his lord and savior. Yeah. And the the wire fraud, 20 years. Unemployment fraud, I think, is is five years. Uh, The money laundering, 10 years. Like a lot of that would be probably served concurrently. He might end up getting seven to 12 years. I mean, but still, that's a significant prison sentence. So anyway, happy day. More, More reason to celebrate. And, you know, again, happy day because justice is being done. Our justice system is working. I just want to be clear on that. All right. We have a lot of news to get to. And then, of course, we have the good news at the end. If you have good news you want to send in to us or corrections or anything, you can send it to us at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. And I just want to give a quick shout out to our patrons. You seriously make this show possible. You make it so that we can take vacations. You make it so we can give health benefits to everybody. 
If you want to sign up to be a patron, uh, it's just three bucks a month, $36 for the whole year. You get this show ad free and you get it early. You get it the night before it comes out to the public. And it's it's a, I think, a, a really great deal, one of the one of the better deals. But of course, it's always free to anyone who just wants to listen wherever you get your podcast. But you can sign up at patreon.com slash Miller She Wrote. And if you sign up at the five dollar level, you also get the Jack show ad free and early. So very cool. All right, let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right, first up from Kyle Cheney at Politico. Donald Trump has spent the hours since he was found liable for sexual abuse assailing the judge and jurors who presided over the case, calling them partisan and saying they should be ashamed of themselves. But newly unsealed court filings indicate that Trump's attorney was making a sharply different argument behind the scenes in order to dissuade the judge from ejecting a juror who listened to podcaster Tim Poole, a far-right pro-Trump commentator who has aligned himself with figures like Steve Bannon. Quote, a juror's political affiliation is not grounds for dismissal, even in cases involving a political figure. That's Trump's lawyer, Joey Taco Pants, Joe Tacopina, in a May 2nd filing that was unsealed by U.S. District Court Judge Lewis Kaplan, who I love, on Wednesday. Kaplan ultimately sided with Tacopina's argument, leaving the juror in place. This guy was on the jury. Takapina was responding to an April 30th motion by the plaintiff, E. Jean Carroll, to disqualify this juror, identified only as juror number 77. Carroll's legal team wanted him disqualified for inferred bias based on his acknowledgement that he listened to Tim Poole's show a few times over the last six months. Quote, juror number 77 is described Poole's podcast as independent, middle and balanced. A juror who views Poole's podcast in that way may subjectively believe that he has no relevant bias, but has just certainly confirmed that he does. That was the attorney for Carroll, who wrote in the motion, no person capable of deciding this case fairly and impartially would seek out only Poole's content, rely on YouTube to promote other content based on Poole's podcast, and maintain that Poole's commentary is middle and balanced. Unquote. The fight is something of a turnabout for Trump, who has long attacked unfavorable court decisions based solely on the political affiliation of the president, who appointed a particular judge, or the perceived political leanings of the hometown of the jurors. Quote, what else can you expect from a Trump-hating Clinton-appointed judge who went out of his way to make sure that the result was as negative as it could possibly be, speaking to and in control of a jury from an anti-Trump area, which is probably the worst place in the U.S. for me to get a fair trial. That's what Trump said in all caps on Truth Social, just hours after the verdict. But ultimately, the juror in question joined all the others to find Trump liable for sexually assaulting E. Jean Carroll in the 90s and defaming her when he denied the allegation last year. The nine-member jury ordered Trump to pay Carroll $5 million in damages, including the Tim Pool guy. Takapina's argument comes as Trump is expected to face a deluge of civil and criminal proceedings related to his bid to overthrow the 2020 election, his handling of classified documents, obstruction of justice, his business as empire, allegedly fraudulently financial dealings, all sorts of crimes. Takapina argued in his eight-page filing that jurors can't be dismissed purely because of their political affiliation. Rather, he said, dismissal is warranted when a juror's life experience align closely with the issues they're expected to decide on during trial. He argued extensively that a juror's choice of media diet, like Tim Pool's podcast, does not automatically mean the juror subscribes to the same political views. Quote, under the plaintiff's logic, police officers can't serve on criminal cases or jurors interested in women's rights issues can't serve on sex discrimination cases. The law does not permit such excusals based on such broad judgment about jurors and their ability to serve fairly. So very interesting. It is indeed. And a second story up on this one is this is from Phil Helsel and he's at NBC. Now, I find this really interesting. A Texas man who killed a protester almost three years ago, uh, he was sentenced Wednesday to 25 years in prison Although the state's Republican governor, Greg Abbott, has promised to approve a pardon if given the opportunity. Motherfucker. Daniel Perry, 35, an Army sergeant, was convicted last month by a Travis County jury of murder in the fatal shooting of Garrett Foster in downtown Austin in July of 2020. On April 8th, the day after the jury returned its verdict, Governor Greg Abbott tweeted that he wanted to pardon Perry and said he asked the Board of Pardons and Paroles to consider the matter. Well, Travis County District Attorney Jose Garza at the time called Abbott's intervention in the case deeply troubling. I would agree. 
This is a quote. In our legal system, a jury gets to decide whether a defendant is guilty or innocent, not the governor. That's from Garza. He said that on April 9th in a statement. Abbott said in vowing to pardon Perry that Texas has a strong stand your ground self-defense law, and he suggested that Garza was a progressive district attorney. Well, Perry fatally shot Foster, who was 28, who had been legally carrying a rifle at a demonstration against police brutality and racial injustice in downtown Austin on the evening of July 25th, and that was in 2020. Perry was in a vehicle and Foster approached the intersection carrying the semi-automatic rifle. This is from the police. Perry shot Foster from the vehicle with a handgun and told police that Foster, an Air Force veteran, had pointed the weapon at him and that the shooting was in self-defense. And that's according to police. The protest demonstration in Austin was against police brutality and racial injustice. And it was one of the many that took place in the cities across the country that summer And that was because of the death of George Floyd in the hands of the Minneapolis police. Perry was found guilty of murder, but was found not guilty of the second charge he faced. And that was aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Well, under Texas law, the Board of Pardons and Paroles has to first recommend a pardon before the governor can act on it. Well, Abbott said he was permitted to ask the board to review it. And he said he asked the board to do so and to expedite that matter. Well, Perry faced up to life in prison on the murder conviction. He's facing life in prison for this. His attorney, Clint Brody, said at the time of the guilty verdict that they planned to appeal. And a judge on May 3rd rejected a request by Perry's attorney for a new trial in that case. So this will be really interesting. Obviously, it reminds me a lot of the Rittenhouse case where he was found innocent for killing two protesters. Well, not guilty. Uh, Not guilty. Thank you for that uh, correction. He was found not guilty in the case, but this guy was found guilty. So I find it fascinating, especially because this was in Texas. Yeah. And he's been sentenced to 25 years. And we'll see what the the Board of Pardons and Paroles has to say about it. Um, But I hope they reject Governor Abbott's request. (laughs) I hope so, too. Yeah. All right. Next up. In the waning days of their legislative session, Missouri lawmakers passed a bill Wednesday that would ban transition care for transgender youth. The legislation, which had stalled for weeks in the Republican-controlled General Assembly because of disagreement over whether to include exceptions, is the latest in a national push by conservatives to limit access to medical care for transgender children, including puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries. The Missouri bill allows young people already receiving hormone treatment and puberty blockers to continue, And the portion of the bill restricting hormone treatment and puberty blockers would expire in 2027. The measure would also ban transition surgeries for adult prisoners. Okay. Missouri lawmakers also passed on Wednesday a bill that would ban transgender women and girls from competing on sports teams that align with their gender identity. The Missouri bill comes amid a national blitz of Republican legislation targeting transition care for transgender youth. We've seen it all over. This year already, Dana, at least 13 states have enacted laws or policies aimed at banning or severely limiting those treatments. And the rapidly changing legal landscape has placed transition care out of reach for many transgender children in the Midwest and South, which, of course, is infuriating. And it's infuriating to the LGBTQ plus rights advocates. And it's prompted several lawsuits challenging the new rules. Several states bordering Missouri, including Iowa, Kentucky, Tennessee and Oklahoma, have passed new limits on transition care for minors this year. An attempt to ban care for minors in Kansas failed when lawmakers didn't muster enough votes to override the Democratic governor's veto. These bills in Missouri go to the desk of Governor Mike Parson, who's a Republican. He's indicated to local reporters he supports these bills. Separately, a state judge in St. Louis County is scheduled to hear arguments this summer about whether to allow the attorney general's rule limiting transgender care for people of all ages to go into effect while a legal challenge continues. Thank you for that. And I just want to state this so people understand the severity of what's happening. Over 540 anti-LGBTQ bills have been introduced in state legislatures. This is a record number, 540. Over 220 bills specifically target transgender and non-binary people. 220. Mm. That's huge. This is not an exercise. This is a code red for the community. And a lot of these are getting passed. It's it's terrifying. So again, we're sending out our love to our trans and non-binary family. And we're continuing to fight alongside you. And just so you know, we have your back. We're doing everything we can. I know we both are. Um, thank you so much for that, AG. And this is from Michael Fanone for Rolling Stone. Okay. This is what, this is it. I woke up last week to a text from my mother. Okay. Its contents hit me like a sucker punch. And this is a quote. CNN is hosting a town hall with Trump. Caitlin Collins is moderating. What the fuck? 
Then came confirmation. CNN will, in fact, host a town hall on Wednesday. That is, that is tonight as you're listening, as we're recording this, okay? And that's May 10th on prime time. So I can already hear the questions. And why shouldn't they? Donald Trump is the clear Republican frontrunner for the presidency, enjoying at least 70 percent of Republican primary vote, which is insane. Why wouldn't it be appropriate for a network to have him on? Well, his response, again, this is all from the article. This is Fanon. My response to those questions is simple. Twice impeached former president Donald J. Trump lied countless times to the American people, most famously when he told us and continues to tell us that the 2020 presidential election was rigged and that he was the winner. So so what? You say, well, they're just words, and certainly not the first time a politician has lied to his constituents. I'll tell you why this is different. Those lies persuaded thousands of his supporters to storm the U.S. Capitol on January 6th in 2021, violently attacking uniformed police officers and terrorizing members of Congress and their staff. I witnessed this assault firsthand, and as an officer with the Metropolitan Police Department, who, like hundreds of MPD officers, responded to the U.S. Capitol Police Department's calls for assistance after their officers were overrun by Trump's mob. As a result of my efforts that day, I was severely beaten, struck numerous times with a taser, and suffered a heart attack, as well as traumatic brain injury. One police officer died, and several others took their own lives in the wake of that barbaric day. This is from Officer Fanon, good friend of the pod. Now, He went on to say, it's not just that Trump lies and political rhetoric sparked an uprising at our nation's capital. Trump, a U.S. president, lied in an effort to defraud the American people and overturn a free and fair election in an attempt to remain in power. Just see January 6th Select Committee's report. In doing so, he betrayed every aspect of his oath to represent us as Americans. We no longer need to imagine what Trump is capable of. He has shown us that he is an authoritarian who will use any means at his disposal, including violence, to remain in power. Putting him on stage, having him answer questions like a normal candidate who didn't get people killed in the process of trying to end the democracy he's attempting to once again run, normalizes what he did. It sends a message that attempting a coup is part of the process, that accepting election results is a choice, and that there are no consequences in the media or in politics or anywhere else for rejecting them. Now, full disclosure, I work for CNN. That is, I receive a monthly check from them and have since abruptly quit my job as an MPD officer almost one year to the day after I was injured. In the nearly two years that I've worked for this network, I have had countless conversations with its employees, producers, hosts, journalists, camera operators, etc. They all have stories about Trump years. When the former president attacked them, many by name, he inspired countless acts of violence, both threatened and overt, from his supporters. Many employees told me they were afraid to wear anything, that identified them as CNN employees when out in public. So why lend your network's platform to someone like that? In a recent trip to CNN's Washington, D.C. bureau, I sat silently in the green room as guests, anchors, and employees filtered through and clamored about how outrageous it was that CBS would give Marjorie Taylor Greene an interview on its prestigious 60-minute series. Good question. I hope my fellow CNN employees have the balls to raise those same questions with the network executives. Hmm. Yep, Mike Fanon. And... um... He tells it like like it is. And you can Absolutely. read the full piece. These are just ex- excerpts. You can read the full piece by Fanon at Rollingstone.com. I highly encourage you to do so. There's going to be alternate programming, counter-programming tonight on MSNBC with Chris Hayes, who is inviting Rachel Maddow to come on his show. And I know that this airs on Thursday, but if anybody is getting this somehow tonight before this town hall, please don't watch it. I've put that out on Twitter. Uh, and, you know, I'm I'm probably killing my chances of ever being on CNN by doing that. But, uh, you know, at this point, if this is what they're going to do, I don't want to be. We've also learned today that the audience, Dana, for this town hall is going to be Republicans and Trump supporters and Republican-leaning independents. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. They're putting him in front of an audience of of friendlies. you got to be fucking kidding. And all that's going to do is legitimize him. Yep. And that's unacceptable. But they're doing this because he was their cash cow. You know, after yeah. the after the war in Afghanistan ended and after Biden got into the White House, CNN started losing money and they hate losing money. Yeah. Not losing money, but not making as much, I should say. Sure. <laughs> and so that's a problem for me. I, I don't understand the legitimization and rehabilitation tour of Donald Trump. I don't care if he's the leading, you know, I don't I don't care what the polls say. You're going by polls that are conducted. I mean. 
No one in Gen Z answers their fucking cell phone from an unknown number. They None don't even these, do they're, cell phones. Yeah, these, that's this what, that's my point. These are landlines. Land these, they are asking, and listen, I'm not saying everyone who has a landline is an old person. There's some of us, I don't have one, but there's some that still do. But overwhelmingly, they are pulling a generation that is aging out. Mm -hmm. And so it is absurd to follow these polls when the younger generation don't have landlines. They're not calling their, their cell phones. It's absurd. They, they, he's not a legitimate candidate and they want to make him one because yeah. he makes them money. It's infuriating. All right. Again, full piece by Fanon at rollingstone.com. Uh, after that, we need some good news. So let's yes, take a quick please. break and then, and then get to the good news. Everybody stick around. We'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's AG, and I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I was tired of taking so many pills and supplements and superfoods. I wanted something that was easy to add to my busy schedule and also way more affordable and cost effective instead of that cabinet full of supplements and vitamins. I take AG1 first thing every morning. It's delicious scoop, one delicious scoop and a cup of water. And I do that before I do anything else. It makes me feel like I can do anything that day. It's awesome. And we want to thank Athletic Greens for their support. Right now, they're offering you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase when you go to athleticgreens.com slash dailybeans. It took me a while to find a high-quality supplement that tasted great, and AG1 delivers. Since I started using it, I've been blown away by the difference it's made in my life. It saved me so much time and money, and it's the ultimate bang for the buck. It combines a daily multivitamin, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, adaptogens, and a greens blend all in one scoop. I love AG1. And not only has it improved my health, but it's also simplified my routine. Just one scoop of powder mixed with water each morning. I'm set for the day. It's amazing. So if you're looking for that one thing to prioritize your health, look no further than AG1 by Athletic Greens. One daily serving comes with 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. So you know you're truly investing in your well-being and it's the best stuff. Try it out and see the difference it can make in your life. So if you're looking for a simpler and cost-effective supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash dailybeans. That's athleticgreens.com slash dailybeans. Check it out. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news, everyone? Then good news, everyone. Good news, good news. And if you have any good news, confessions, corrections, if you want to give a shout out to somebody you love or a local business in your area or your small business or your big business with Lily Tomlin and Bette Midler. I love that movie. Yes. Pod pet picks. If you don't, if you can't pay your pod pet tax, you can always share an adoptable pet in your area. If you want to play What the Mutt, anything you want to send us at all, please send it to us at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. All right. First up from DD, pronouns she and her. Hello, Beans Queens. I can't express how happy I am for the E. Jean Carroll verdict. Even though we were stuck at work, cube neighbor Jamie and I were refreshing our newsfeed every three seconds until the news broke. Although we couldn't hoot and holler in the office around Trump supporters, we definitely high-fived at her desk when the verdict was read. When I texted my husband the news, his response was, awesome, make America safe again. Nice. Oh, I knew I liked him for a reason. <laughs> the universe can just keep bringing in that schadenfreude karma. As kid tax, here's a POV picture of my boys. If giant spinning pinwheels while riding in a shopping cart isn't pure happiness, I don't know what is. Fun fact, kid number two in the hoodie was my classified file searcher. Look at... Cute. <laughs> and you're running through. The... That's a target. I can tell by the cart. I'm like, oh yeah, I know for sure. Oh my goodness, this is so adorable. I want to oh do this. God. Let's let's reenact this when we see I'm each in. other again, Dana. <laughs> we need someone to push the cart. Any volunteers, let us know. We'll see you at Target. <laughs> All right, this next one's from Laurel. No pronouns up from Laurel. Greetings to you both. I love your podcast. I've written before with pictures of my adopted death row pity. We were proud to have her made famous. I'm writing because I think it would be helpful to um, beleaguered pro-democracy Americans to know about what's happening in England. It's getting no press here at all. The conservatives lost all their power in an election after one disastrous prime minister after another. The coronation took all the attention, alas, and we all missed that England voted out Tories. I wish Ooh. someone would broadcast this story because we need to hang on to hope that we can vote MAGAs out completely. We can do it. If England can vote out the party of Boris Johnson, we can vote out the party of Trump. 
Now, um, this is just a, a, a headline. It says the election bloodbath was bad enough for the Tories. Tactical voting could make it far worse. Excellent. And we'll include That's this from in the me. Guardian on May 6th. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I didn't know that. I didn't either. And I am super plugged in. Uh, and yeah, I guess the coronation took all the juice. Wow. England voted out the Tories. Well done, Laurel. And uh, everybody, England voted out the Tories. Another reason to celebrate this week. More good news. Next. Uh, I know, right? Next up, James from Fresno. Pronouns he and him. Hey, AG and DG. Thanks for everything you do. It's truly inspiring. You were all missed last week, but, and it's a huge but. Thanks, James. I'm glad you walk the walk and talk the talk when it comes to mental health for yourself and inspire that in your team as well. I hope to find a boss as badass as you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. A bit of a good and concerning update. I was able to visit a small community of about 600 in Allensworth, California. This was the first black community here in California, and they've created a national park, included our photos. This was an amazing trip, and I would recommend it to all who have a chance to stop in. The reason for the mixed news I am part of the social justice team at the Unitarian Universalist Church in town that has been taking donations for Allensworth because of the reappearance of Tulare Lake. That's a ghost lake that has risen due to the excess rain this last year and the incoming snowmelt from the Sierras. They are a small community that is on the cusp of being flooded completely due to mismanagement of water. Oy. There are multiple factors that have caused this, but the largest need they have right now is mosquito repellent and attention. The flooding has receded a bit over the past few months in the town, but the concern for the impending snowmelt and potential flooding is around the corner with June and July coming. It's an amazing piece of history. I'm glad we still have landmarks like this to combat the whitewashing of American history. Thanks again for all you do. And there are photos of the Allensworth house. Yeah, goodness. And the town. So everybody, if you can give to Allensworth, please do. Absolutely. Town of about 600. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for that. Indeed. All right. This is from Gwen. No pronouns given. Hi, ladies. You asked if anyone had a pop cultural reference triggered by your show opening. On cleanup, I never thought Garland sounded like the impressive clergyman, but I always expect him to say, but there were all of them deceived because another rule was made. Do you know the voice? <laughs> yeah. That's a Lord of the Rings reference, right? Oh my God. You said right like I would know. I'm so sorry. Oh. I'm so bad at those. <laughs> Look at this cat, though. There's pet tags here. Look they are Clancy. so cute. And then the ring. Oh, Pet tags is, is a very relaxed, very large Clancy. Although, is that oh. separate? Quote is Lord of the Rings reference, in yeah. case you don't know. There you go. Oh, if I had scrolled and down just a little bit more, I would have saved my embarrassment. That's cool. And there's and there's Clancy. What a beautiful baby. I wonder if that belly is a trap. Gwen, let us know. <laughs> Next up from Dan, pronouns he and him. Good morning, citizens of Beantopia and our matriarchs, AG and DG. I love this. I love this place. Thinking about that use of that credit card for a website domain. Okay, so this is the Milo Yiannopoulos, yes. um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, yay, uh, money triangle. Is it possible Milo was so messy that he used the card for Kanye because he wasn't invited to dinner? <laughs> My lovely and talented wife has a phrase regarding how all criminals seem to get caught. Choose your accomplices wisely. Nice. Anyway, never been pegged and not asking, but <laughs> I suggest when a Republican gets pegged by a Democrat and then changes from a conservative to a progressive, that should be called light brighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Because of, of the pegs. Oh my God, that is hysterical, Dan. I think we've invented light brighting, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. I'll let Anonymous know. You are all loved, Queens, Kings, and everywhere in between. Thank you so much, Dan. <laughs> light brighting. Oh my God, AG, but it gets better. This is from Peggy, pronouns they and them. Long time, first time. I made a thing for you. I present Peg Amaga. And there is a <gasps> website. Peggy purchased the fucking website. <laughs> Pegamaga.com. I know it's a long way to go for a joke. No, it's not, Peggy. But after making nope. it, I think we might get some traction. I will donate the site to you if it takes off. Peggy. Oh. Okay. So from the website, our services section, straight to the point. Oh. Get excited and close the deal. I can't. Oh I can't. Oh my God. This is so funny. 
Step four, pick your safety word. In the spirit of safety, choose a safety word that you and your partner can use to keep communication open and ensure a comfortable and positive experience for both parties. We suggest, we suggest Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've got light writing and now we've got a website, Pegamaga. Oh, Peggy, thank com. you for that, my dear friend. I'm so excited that it was available. I'm co- sort of, I mean, I guess I'm not shocked, but a little bit. <laughs> I knew this was going to open up the, the, uh, just a whole oh, flood of excellent submissions. So good. To add yours, you can go to dailybeanspot.com and click on contact. Uh, but yeah, check out pegamaga.com. Oh my God. <laughs> For light brighting near you. Do you think Peggy, and I'm wondering if it's really Peggy or if that's just if that's a made up name, they, them. But Peggy, if you want to add light brighting. Oh, so oh, brilliant. Maybe, Dan, God, that's so funny. Hey, yeah, send in to to us your your thoughts on the name for this activity um, for pegging a mug because then we can add them to the website. Okay. Uh, yeah, and a good URL is never a waste of a joke ever. Yeah. I own like seventeen. So good. I've never really done anything with, but they're out there. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Again, you can send your good news to dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. Dana, do you have any final thoughts? I do. One more announcement for my show in Utah. It's June 1st. I'm part of a huge thing for Utah Pride. Tickets are a little pricey, and I say that just because I don't want anyone to be shocked, but it is a huge fundraiser for Utah Pride. There's going to be drag queens. I'm going to be doing a 20-minute set. There's just going to be a lot of fun uh, that night. And um, Brian Justin Crumb is going to be performing. Monet Exchange, Ultra Nate. I'll be doing like time. So if you've got the money and you're interested in going, it's in Utah. And you, it's June 1st. It's in Salt Lake. And you can go to utahpride.org and get single tickets if you don't want to do the entire Pride experience. Just single tickets for the Utah Pride Live. So I hope to see some beans there. Oh, that would be so awesome. And I'm so glad this is happening. Um, it's going to be beautiful there. June June in Utah is lovely. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love Salt Lake in June. I'll be back there actually later <laughs> later in the month for the HRC Gala. I like Salt Lake in June. How about <laughs> you? <laughs> now we need to write a new song about light brighting in Utah in June. Okay. All right. Good? Let's do it. All right. I'm into it. All right, everybody, we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q. Take everyone you know with you. Everyone, all the time. All the people. I've been AG. And I've been DG. And them's the beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg and Amy Carrero. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. MSW Media. Curiosity pushes you forward, leading to new discoveries. Mayomi uses the best that Coastal California has to offer, which has resulted in wines that taste like no other. Enjoy the bold flavors of Mayomi Pinot Noir, Cabernet Sauvignon, Red Blend, and Mayomi Bright, Mayomi's new lower alcohol Pinot Noir. Discover the unrivaled taste of Mayomi at shopmayomi.com. That's shopmeiomi.com. Mayomi, flavor forward. Please enjoy responsibly. Mayomi Wines of Campo, California. Price drop. It's time to shop at Nordstrom Rack. Get to your rack store today for first dibs on new markdowns. Now score even more, up to 70% off. Brands everyone loves at Nordstrom Rack. Find genius deals on easy dresses, denim, tops, sneakers, and more. Plus, tons of must-haves for the family and home. So shop your Nordstrom Rack store today and save up to 70% on so many new markdowns. But hurry, deals this great won't last long.